Okay, so we are restarting our citizenship curriculum. We had worked our way through, um, we started actually, I when I started teaching at Blue Ridge Literacy, we were in the early 1800s. So this will be my first time teaching this, this wow. part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exciting things. So since it's just me and you, um, what we will do then is you read a paragraph and then I can read a paragraph. Does that sound good? Okay. Okay, just to give you a break so you're not reading the whole time. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, go ahead and start here and read to there. Okay. Coming to America in the, in the early 19,000, many immigra immigrants came by boat to the United States uh, through New York City. This is photograph of European immigrants. Um, from that time period, how do you think they felt when they arrived here? What do you think they said to each other uh, when they saw New York uh, for the first time? Perfect. So in the early 1900s, that's how we say that, 1900s, many immigrants came by boat to the United States through New York City, right? So they came through a place called Ellis Island. Have you heard of that before? Mm. Um, so Ellis Island is right beside of Liberty Island where the Statue of Liberty is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ellis Island, it was this big building. I think it had other places around it. And all immigrants that came from Europe went to New York City. So mm -hmm. you uh, went through Ellis Island and they would allow so many people in a day. And that's where they would give you your papers to make you part of the United States. Oh. It was like, it was <laughs> much easier, easy. right? Yeah. <laughs> much easier, you just get here, right? <laughs> um, and then basically more and more people started coming and they, at first they put quotas on it. They said, you know, we'll only take 200,000 people from Egypt this year. Mm -hmm. What they saw was, is that, you know, the first come first serve that wasn't working because we had some people that needed it more or some people, you know, this that, and the other, right? And that's mm -hmm. how we started working into the system that we have today where each individual applies and it's kind of on a case by case basis, right? Mm -hmm. so I think that's really interesting. And I like these questions right here. How do you think they felt when they arrived here? You know, they come in on a boat and they maybe wake up in the morning and all of a sudden the Statue of Liberty is there, right? Yeah. What do you yeah. think they felt? I think it's, uh, it's feeling weird because no places to live, no, no, um, I think uh, if I, <laughs> If I I, I was uh, one of them, I feel scared about uh, strange places. What I will live in there? Yeah, <laughs> I mean completely. It's like you're starting over. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like if if you come by yourself, right? If it's just you, like where am I gonna sleep? Like if I don't have anyone that I know there. Yeah. So you're right, you know, like, I always think of it as like, oh, I bet they were so excited, but I bet they were really anxious and nervous too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think that's a good point. All right, I'll read here. So over the years, millions of immigrants have come to the United States from countries all over the world. They come here for different reasons. Work with your partner to make a list of reasons why people immigrate to the United States. So what are some reasons that people immigrate to the United States? Um, I don't know. In the, in the past... Uh, Let's say today. Today? Okay. Mm -hmm. Today, economic, um, better life for freedom. Freedom? Maybe um, maybe to, uh, to, to get a um, comfort job or... Work, right? Yeah. Mm. Work or, and then sometimes I think family brings people here. Yeah. Maybe. So how do you think these reasons are different than the ones that they had back then? What do you think? Do you see that there would be any different ones? 
Yeah, because in the past, uh, U.S. It, it's it's started to live, not not have economic, not have uh, war, um, opportunity to work or uh, not have um, in, in intelligent like freedom like uh, like now. Yeah. Exactly. Like like basic life not 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 uh not up, approved in the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what you mean, and I think you kind of bring up um. Oh, what point did you say? I forgot it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I I did really like what you kind of said around like um people are uh the intelligence like you said freedom to have intelligence I think is what you said. Yeah. So I really liked that you brought that up because I think that's, that is something that's changed. Do you think that's something that's changed from the past to the future, like now, the present? In U.S.? Yeah. Do you think like kind of, um, you know, maybe like China and Russia, I think are a little different, but let's say like compared to Egypt, right? Did you have to come here to have access to like good education or could you do it online? Um, in in my country, uh, uh, online education not uh, not allowed to um, be, because the the wireless or or net network is still bad in in my country. Okay. We don't have this is opportunity to can um, to can get education online and the certificate not approved or accredited accredited. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, accredited. yeah accredited online okay, okay that's interesting so it, it still seems like the united states is because of the infrastructure it has right presents mm -hmm. a lot more opportunities in some places yeah very cool all right i i think in u.s more uh, technology than uh than middle east more. that makes sense um mm -hmm. just because of like uh, a lot of the things that were happening in the Middle East that when we got a lot of our infrastructure for internet, like mm -hmm. it's kind of, but they call it leapfrogging in technology. So an example is like in India. So here we had like landline telephones. So it's like everything, it was like attached to the wall with a cord and there was like a how, you know, and there was like lines everywhere. Yeah. And then we had to move into cell phones. Mm -hmm. But now there's like all of the cell phones in India in use. It's like 2.3 per person or something like that. Like they have a crazy mm -hmm. amount of cell phones, but no landlines really. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's the luxury. So everybody has a cell phone, but no one has a landline. And it's mm -hmm. because they just got to skip over that piece of the technology. Mm -hmm. So like okay. we had, did you ever have to do dial up where it's like the computers go, rrr, 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 and that's how you got on the <laughs> like, internet? Like error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sit there for like two minutes, you're like, is this going to connect or what? Yeah. Whereas now it's just you log in and you get it. Do you, yeah. do you guys in India, do you, or sorry, in Egypt, do you guys think, I know where you're from, in Egypt, do you think you guys will like leapfrog that? Like where you're, you know, you, instead of having like old, slow internet, you guys will have like fast the best stuff immediately you won't have to do all that maybe yeah. pros and cons right yeah but uh, we have we have uh, now um, uh, more um, more technology um, than other other uh, like india or something like that but it's still not same to us we uh, us have have more technology more um i think you you can uh, better life easy life easy life i mean i agree you don't have to think as much right yeah it's like yeah. everything is available yeah yeah <laughs> what were you gonna say and i interrupted what <laughs> you were gonna say something and then i talked and interrupted you uh, i just want to say um in the uh, in u.s um I can do anything by self, not 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 to can, to uh, go to line and uh, and wait for the yeah we we have in US yeah like DMV but not crowded like you uh, like Egypt. <laughs> yeah. So like here, right? We have kind of a DMV for like Roanoke has a DMV, the county has a DMV, Salem has a DMV. 
Or like yeah. in Egypt, was it like many people would come to Cairo that didn't live in Cairo? Uh, yeah, and and then not uh, not more organized uh, like U.S. Mm. We don't have organization something like the people crowded so many people in the uh, like like uh, one place too hard <laughs> if yeah. you if you ha if you wanted to uh make official paper oh my god it's it's hard to to do it in us you can um you can pay the bill online you can do something in in your home yeah so it's kind of just the infrastructure, like the processes and the way yeah. it's like the government has been thinking about how to make it good for citizens for a long time, right? Yeah. That's really interesting. Do you think, so you, you and I are about the same age that yeah. I put together. Okay. <laughs> so do you, rem like, were you around for Arab Spring? I've just wanted to ask you about that. You don't have to tell me anything about it if you don't want to. I was just always curious, like if you... If that like if you were aware of that when it was happening, okay. I'm sure it was like because I think I was I was in like very early I was like maybe 18 or 19 when it happened. Can you say it again? I I don't oh. I don't understand what's the, what's you, the question. <laughs> do you remember Arab Spring? Arab Spring. So we call it here Arab Spring. It was when in Egypt there were many protests. Oh, what, what Arab Spring? I think it was in 2010, and there were many protests in Egypt. Oh, oh, is that a revolution? Like, revolution? yes, yeah, yeah and we yeah. called it Arab Spring. I was just wondering oh. if like, you had, <laughs> were you there for that? Like, were you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I understand. And 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 in in the in the time, um, like 20, 22, 21, 20, okay. like the, yeah, uh, in my country. Uh, we uh, had been the revolution because we want freedom and we want to uh, better life like 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 so many people over it and so many people under 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 poor under mm -hmm. under there was a big gap between the yeah. wealthy and the poor yeah Okay. And the like the president and the 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 both of the all, all of working or something like uh, make bad money and bad in bad situation mm -hmm. and all all of the boss taking all the all of the money okay. and and all of the the society and pollution we we have don't don't have any money to can yeah. to can live yeah and the, the people that's make um make him annoyed and stop stop do that we want to live in like like the like the economic people like the president like not like yeah. the president but 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 we want um basic life but quality but quality life yeah you're <laughs> tired of them keeping so much money for themselves when you only need a little bit to live like yeah. a good life yeah yeah we and we don't have the, the like like my age and all of the same age we don't have job we ha we don't have opportunity opportunity to to make money mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, the 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 older man the same in the position mm -hmm. and and not not have um opportunity to the 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 like youth to go job or yeah because so, that we we yeah i mean keep talking because like for me <laughs> Like mm -hmm. you're talking about a lot of the same reasons why a lot of people came to the United States. Mm -hmm. It's because like, I didn't have opportunity. Like I didn't mm -hmm. have the quality of life that I knew I deserved. I didn't have the safety that I knew I deserved. Yeah. Right. And I think I am curious, right. Cause I know that you came here with your, your husband. Yeah. Um, and I wonder, I was like, well, what, like why the U S versus Egypt? Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it seems like you're kind of explaining a lot of that yeah but the, the reason i'm i'm came with my husband because my husband have the 
uh, citizenship when he was young and the, the uh, and his uncle has uh, like a family business and uh and make the paper uh, the official paper to all of all of my husband families to mm -hmm. come here and uh to can uh war because that um this is the reason my husband uh live live uh, in us mm -hmm. have been he have been here uh, i i think like 15 15 years old oh, wow so a long time <laughs> yeah yeah Wow. So, and when I when I came, I, um, like why not to education? Because in my country, I don't like my 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 educa my education. Mm -hmm. I'm go to this is uh, this is a cert certificate because my my score, not 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 things I love to uh, learning about yeah. it. Do you understand? Like they decided for you what you should study based on a test. Yeah, depending the score. Yeah. <laughs> what did they tell you to study in Egypt? Do you remember? What? What? With who, your test score, what would you have studied in Egypt? Uh, I'm uh, studied in Egypt, uh, f faculty of arts. Okay. A department, Arab civilization, like history and. Um, uh, like like to can be a tour guide in in my country oh. but we but uh, in in italy and uh, greek but but i don't know uh, anything about italian or depending score you can study to pass the exam mm -hmm. but the education like like here um i'm doing everything myself yeah. like like if you now go to job what can do like professional like to mm -hmm. be professional yeah yeah not to study and reading and anything useful or benefit for for your life or for your career yeah mm -hmm. that makes sense so you're like you know you have you feel like you have more control over the opportunities not only do you have more opportunities but you have more control over them yeah very cool so what surprised you the most about the United States? Um, you must have asked, um, the people. <laughs> the people? Yeah. What do you expect? Uh, I'm, I'm, ex uh, I'm expect, uh, like, um, not not make not make comfortable for speak or don't understand if, if uh, when i came in us mm -hmm. um is expect uh, no one uh, like no one welcome to me because i'm straight i'm foreigner uh, but uh, a specific in virginia uh, all of um, american people helpful and uh, and the kind and <laughs> good that makes me happy to hear yeah <laughs> we're representing right right yeah yeah good that's awesome all right so we sorry i love talking as you know <laughs> but we only have 15 minutes left in class and we're only on one page so we got i'm sorry we are run okay so go ahead and read this and then i'll read the next one okay okay from the old world to the new world, over 500 years old, uh, years ago, people from Europe bega began coming to North America. They had different reasons for stealing here. Settling. Some, settling here. Settling, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Some groups came for political, political, political freedom so that they could govern themselves Good. other people came for economic opportunity they hoped to find gold or to trade tobacco like right <laughs> Good. Tobacco. tobacco you got it and force other groups like the playgrounds in massachusetts Good wanted to be free to practice their own religion perfect so settling 
settle. Settle. What do you think that means? Like resident. Right, exactly. So settlement. settlement. And we hear that now, I think, Israel and Palestine, they use that language a lot, like settlements and settlers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's people that come in, and I don't want to say they take land, but they come in and say, this land is mine, this is where I live now. Oh, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then political freedom. Political freedom, right? So we kind of talked about that a little bit. So a lot of times people came here because they had a king. They had like a, a dictator. They didn't have democracy. They didn't get a say in what their government would look like, right? Yeah. So that's really important, I think, when it comes to citizenship, because the people who designed our government were people who said, I want to govern myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talk about the will of the people a lot when we start getting into talking about the constitution and writing it the will of the people okay mm -hmm. and that's what they mean is the ability to govern yourself is the will of the people okay, okay. all right so in 1620 the pilgrims came to north america from europe they were looking for a place to establish a colony and start their own church so were they looking for political liberty religious freedom religion. or economic opportunity religious freedom religious freedom right they wanted to start their own church mm -hmm. at that time in europe rulers told people where to go to church and how to practice their religion life was difficult for people who had different religious beliefs from their rulers many were prosecuted or sorry many were persecuted or punished for having different beliefs in early america the colonists had freedom of religion. Freedom of religion means that you can practice any religion or not practice a religion. This idea of religious freedom continues to be an important value to Americans today. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look here. What is one reason colonists came to America? Freedom of religion. Freedom of religion. Perfect. Okay. And these are, the, uh, these are your civics test questions. So when you go to citizenship, this could be one of the 10 that they ask you, okay? okay? And then what is freedom of religion? You can practice any religion or not practice any religion. Exactly, right? I think that's the one people forget is like, you can practice any religion, they always get that one, but then you can also not, not practice, practice religion. Mm -hmm. okay? Perfect. Yeah. All right, and we kind of went over this uh, same thing a little bit because I read ahead. But, okay. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this is, I think, one of my favorite ones to talk about and something I want to talk about a little bit at the end. So make sure we read this really good, okay? So you go ahead and start here and read to there. Okay. American Indians for thousands of, of years before Arabs, Arabians, Europeans? Europeans. Ara Europeans okay. arrived there were many tribes of American Indians living in North America. These tribes uh, wow. had tribes Good. Ha had different languages, customs, and belief systems. Some tribes lived in village and farmed the land for food. Other tribes moved often to hunt and gather food. Some tribes such as Navi too? The Navajo. Navajo. Yep. The Cherokee. The Navajo. Uh -huh. Cherokee. Cherokee. Good. Cherokee. And Iru Iru Ir Iroquois. Iroquois. Good. Lived here at the time of the pilgrims. Perfect. So some tribes, such as the Navajo, the Cherokee, and the Iroquois, lived here at the time of the pilgrims. <clears throat> okay, so this one is kind of important um, because these tribes, I just like to bring up, they still live here. Okay, mm -hmm. so they have places called reservations. When the pilgrims came and after many, many white people came, they kind of kicked them off. They settled their land. They said, you guys can live in these little places of land. Mm -hmm. And now they're called reservations, okay? Mm -hmm. So the nearest one to us, there's actually one in Lynchburg. It's the Monacan Nation. And then mm -hmm. my father belongs to one in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really interesting how, like, 
they've yeah. spread out, but they still have very distinct cultures, very distinct languages, and very distinct customs, right? Mm -hmm. so I just like to mention, okay. still here, okay? <laughs> but um, sometimes I worry when we teach this, we teach it in a way that makes people think American Indians are history, but they're not. Mm -hmm. They're still very much here and present. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay. Off my soapbox. That's all I want to <laughs> say. <laughs> okay, I'll read this next paragraph. Okay. So the pilgrims settled in the northeast where the Wampanoag tribe lived. The Wampanoag taught the pilgrims important skills, including how to grow crops such as corn, beans, and squash. The first winter was very hard for the pilgrims, and the Wampanoag helped them to survive. After the first harvest, the pilgrims in the Wampanoag celebrated with a feast. Today, Americans celebrate this event on Thanksgiving every November, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone asks you, what, what do we celebrate at Thanksgiving, what would you say? Um, celebrate of the, um, um, the, in, the American Indians get the food, exactly. <laughs> get the turkey. Yeah. Exactly. The American Indians helped the pilgrims get food and we mm -hmm. celebrate it because they survived. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead and reading here. Over the years, more Europeans immigrate to American and moved west. There was conflict between some American Indian tribes and the Europeans. The settlers Good. De defeated defeated those tribes and took much of their land. The federal government signed treaties. 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 Good. Signed treaties with the tribes and moved them to reservations. Good. Today there are more than 500 federally re recognized tribes. Each tribe has its own social and political system with different languages leaves the stories music and food yep perfect so do actually i pulled up a video i put it down because i was like we're no there's no way we're gonna have time to watch that i will send it i'm gonna post it on our website so that way we'll have this handout you can watch that video on youtube and then we'll have the video from class okay, okay? and okay. it will be um, about the cherokee nation and the eastern band of the cherokee there's two bands long story Sad story, but that's all you need to know. Okay, so okay. these are Native Americans from South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, if it's Pine Ridge, it's probably going to be the Sioux is the um, tribe of Native Americans this is, right? Mm -hmm. So they have different houses. These are called teepees. So these are the guys that would pick up their houses, get all of their horses, and they would chase the buffalo around yeah. the plains, right? Mm -hmm. so I think it's a very interesting story. Yeah. Okay. So who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? American Indians. American Indians, perfect. And name one American Indian tribe in the United States. Um Pleokism? Pelkism? Or let's look up here. Here's three yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Na na Navajo? Navajo? Navajo, good. Navajo. Okay. Yep, Navajo. And mm. then the Cherokee. Cherokee. And the Iroquois. Iroquois. Cherokee. Jossum, he changed his last name to Cherokee. His name is now Jossum Al Cherokee. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. He said, I want to be like the first Americans. <laughs> now, Sacagawea, she's a very cool girl. Okay. So we're going to read about her next. She helped these two idiots right here. This is Lewis and Clark. Mm -hmm. There's these two white dudes. Thomas Jefferson said, go explore. Just like, tell me what's out west, right? Go to the Pacific Ocean and tell me what's there. And these guys kept getting lost. They didn't know what they were doing. So they brought this girl on board, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So we're going to read about her. Her name is Sacagawea, okay? Sacagawea, okay. So I'm going to read this first paragraph because it has a lot of words that are a little confusing. And then you read the second one, okay? Okay. All right. Sacagawea was a, 
oh, sorry, was an American Indian woman who was born in the Shoshone tribe in the Rocky Mountains around 1788. When she was 12 years old, another tribe captured her and made her work as a slave. A few years later, she met a French Canadian fur trader and she became his wife. Okay. Okay. In 18. Zero three in eighteen uh three eighteen oh three eighteen oh three the United States bought the Louisiana territory from France this new land doubled the size of the country. President Thomas Jefferson Jefferson de de decided to send two men. Meriwether Lewis and William Cl Clark. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. William Clark. Good. To explore from St. Louis. St. Louis. Lewis. St. Louis. St. St. Louis. Marisori. Good. To, to the Pacific. To the Pacific Ocean in October of eighteen. All four. Louise and Clark meet Seco. Sacagawea. Sacagawea. Good. And her husband in North Dakota and hired them as guides and interpreters. 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 Good. Sacagawea. Knowledge of different American Indian Indian languages and culture was very helpful to the explorers. She helped them trade horses, and she made pieces with the tribes they met along the route. Route good. Route. She taught Louise and Clark how to collect native food and guided them through the mountains because of Sacagawea's important contribution. She is remembered on the golden dollar coin. Yeah, so I just wanna zoom in here. Mm -hmm. So this is Sacagawea and her coin, right? Mm -hmm. What's this right here? Here, and a baby? Is a baby, okay. <laughs> so this woman, Mm -hmm. so these two idiots across the country mm -hmm. right walking and she took care of a baby the whole time okay <laughs> i just think it's impressive right because it was like they were on horseback you know in the oh. wilderness no one had ever been there before no one white had ever crossed before that right mm -hmm. she's like guiding them all these like three white dudes along and she has a baby you know she's right. having to tell them where to camp she's having to make peace for them having to decide which way they go all they're doing they're just like writing everything down yeah woman a strong woman <laughs> a very strong woman so i i love this particular coin because i just think that this is so important her having her baby on her back like mm -hmm. you know she really did take care of some stuff that mm -hmm. well beyond her pay grade we'll say yeah. all right so just very quickly, I want to go over these words. Okay. So we have this word, immigrants. Immigrants. Okay. Europeans. Europeans. Good. Pilgrims. Pilgrims. Good. American Indians. American Indians. Wampanoag. Wampanoag. Good, good. And this, I think Indian words, they're very good to practice your, um, phonics with and yes. like sounding out the words so you have wam wampa no wampa no egg perfect we have the colonists colonists sa ka ja wea sa ka wea sa ka wea good and then we have president thomas jefferson president thomas jefferson and we have Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Perfect. Clark. Okay. And then these are our four questions that will be brought up. And we've already kind of gone over them. So for, for the sake of time, mm -hmm. we'll just skip over that second review. 
So if you feel like doing homework, go ahead and come to this page, it's page uh, five, and mm -hmm. write a sentence for each of these words. Okay. okay. And if you would like, you can always just pull a sentence from up in here. I just want to make sure that you guys are kind of becoming familiar with that language. Okay? Okay. All right. Do you have any questions for me? No, thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed <laughs> having class with you today. And me. I've enjoyed to one-to-one. -one. <laughs> I know. It's, it's almost like you're tutoring. I was thinking, I was like, wow, she's, she's getting a lot of good speaking practice in. Yeah. Perfect. It was like, it was like almost better than English class, I'm sure yeah <laughs> sure okay well i i have nothing else to add and we are at time unless you need anything else from me uh thank you yeah, <laughs> no problem happy to